Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. In this video, we will discuss the theory of Bursch Pagan test for heteroscedasticity, its step by step application, interpretation, and limitations. The Bursch Pagan test is also referred to as the Bursch Pagan Godfrey or BPG test. This Bursch Pagan test and the White test are the most commonly used statistical methods of detecting heteroscedasticity. As we know, heteroscedasticity is a situation where the variance of residuals is non constant. It violates one of the assumptions of ordinary least squares, which states that the residuals are homoscedastic or have a constant variance. The residuals or error terms are related to one or more of the independent variables in the model. Similar to the White test, the Bursch Pagan test is based on the residuals from regression models to check for heteroscedasticity. It is also based on the chi-square distribution like the white test. Generally, it is used in conjunction with other methods such as graphical analysis. Now let us discuss the step-by-step -step application of the bursch pagan test. First, we have to estimate the model. For illustration, we will consider a simple ordinary least squares model shown here. In this model, we have a dependent variable y and three independent variables x1, x2, and x3. When we estimate this model, we can obtain the residuals that are represented by mu in this equation. In step 2, we have to estimate the sigma square. To obtain sigma square, we square the residuals that we estimated in the regression earlier, take their sum and divide by the number of observations n. This sigma square is used to create a new variable ri. In step 3, we create a new variable ri by dividing the squared residuals by sigma square that we created in the previous step. Step 4 involves running another regression with ri as the dependent variable. The independent variables are the independent variables from the original regression x1, x2, and x3. The regression equation will look like the one shown here. In step 5, we estimate the explained sum of squares for this auxiliary regression and create a new statistic omega as shown here. This omega follows a chi-square distribution with k-1 degrees of freedom which is equal to the number of parameters in the auxiliary regression minus 1. In our example equation, this degree of freedom will be 3 because we have 4 parameters in the auxiliary regression. The null and alternative hypothesis of the test are shown here. We reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic omega is greater than the critical value of chi-square. This implies that the residuals are heterosedastic. On the other hand, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity if the test statistic is less than the critical value. To apply the Bursch Pagan test in R, we can use the Bursch Pagan function from the scedastic package or the BP test function from the LM test package as shown here. In this command, Bursch Pagan is the function that will apply the test and return its results. The OLS results is the object containing results of the OLS model. Our objective is to check whether the residuals of this OLS model are heterosedastic or not. The function will automatically pick up the saved residuals from the model and apply the test. The BP test function also works in the similar manner where OLS results contains the estimates of our model. Both these commands will apply the same test and return the same results. The results of the test often report the test statistic, degrees of freedom, and the p-value. Let us take a look at some hypothetical results here. In this table, the test statistic is equal to 1.36. The example model had three original independent variables, which means that the auxiliary regression had four parameters including the constant and coefficients for three independent variables. So, we end up with three degrees of freedom because k-1 or 4-1 is equal to 3. The p-value here is 0.716, which is greater than 0.05. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. 
we can conclude that the residuals are homoscedastic and heterocedasticity does not seem to be a problem here. One of the advantages of the Brush Pagan test is that it is easy to implement in practice because most software programs have built in commands for it. Other tests often have some requirements that can be restrictive in nature. For example, the Goldfeld quant test needs us to choose some central observations, C, or choose one independent variable to order the observations. Brush Pagan test does not require us to make such choices. Still, this test has its own limitations. The biggest limitation of the test is that it can be sensitive to the assumption of normality. That is, the residuals of the model must be normally distributed. Otherwise, the results of the test may not be reliable. The white test has an advantage over the Brush Pagan test in this regard because the white test does not need the residuals to be normally distributed. For more knowledge on heterocedasticity, its detection and solutions, take a look at the links in the description. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more content on economics and econometrics.